Good day to you all and welcome to the short lecture on computer programming. English is not my native language, so I apologize in advance for any grievances that this might cause. The idea of this video is to give you a general picture of what programming is about. Unfortunately, statistics are against me and 9 out of 10 people will find what I'm about to talk utterly boring. But what the hell, I love challenges. Even those of you who won't find this video are bore, a bore will nonetheless find it strange and for two reasons. First, I'm not going to use a computer to do computer programming. How silly is that? Not as much as it might seem. Second, I'll probably be mixing British English with American English. Don't ask me why. On the good side, you can now recline on your sofa and watch this video the way all videos are meant to be watched. The way I intend to get you interested into programming is by way of teaching you a particular programming language. In a general sense, programming languages are mediums that programmers use to express their ideas. The magical part about programming is that there is a way of bringing these ideas to life, literally. So, let's get started. The programming language that I will be teaching you is called C++. Learning a programming language is not unlike learning a foreign language. It makes perfect sense then to start out by teaching you the most basic kinds of nouns and verbs there are. Or, as computer scientists call them, the primitive elements of a computer language. So let's write them down. C++ language Primitive elements What are they? Well, one ubiquitous example would be numbers Numbers such as these 5 and 3.14 What are the kind of Primitive elements we have are operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And to introduce some more names, these are what we call, pardon, primitive data. If you don't understand what I mean by data, don't worry. Few people actually do understand what data is. It's not a joke. And these are primitive operations. Why are they called primitive, you might ask? Well, one explanation is that they are as simple as things get in this here language. In some sense, they exist from the very beginning. I suppose that's the most politically correct explanation. Unsurprisingly, as you know from your own experience, knowing a, f a few standalone nouns and verbs really isn't all that useful. Unless you know sumimasen in Japanese, it turns out it's kind of very useful <laughs> for a single verb. The, the, what you want to know is a way of combining these primitive elements into a valid sentence. So I'm going to show you one such way to obtain simple sentences in C++. And that's something we call means of combination. One possible combination of these primitive elements is an arithmetic expression that we all learn from school, such as this one, 5 plus 3.14. Every expression has two important constituents, operators and operands. So, the plus here is the operator, and these guys are its operands. Operands are the stuff that operators work on. As most sentences in our natural language have meaning, it's reasonable to expect the same situation in C++. So what would be the meaning of this expression? The answer is rather simple. The meaning of an expression is the value of that expression. So what's the value of this expression? 
it's not hard to see that it's 8.14. The process of obtaining a value is called evaluation in computer science jargon. From what you know of European writing systems is that they employ a special punctuation mark to demarcate the ends of sentences. In C++ we have the same thing, but the situation is simpler. C++ employs a single such punctuation symbol, and it's the semicolon symbol. So what I need to do to make this expression into a valid syntactic sentence is that I have to terminate it with this semicolon symbol. And that's why this symbol is also called a terminator or an, a terminating symbol. And now, this sentence that I have obtained is something that computer scientists call a statement. Which is kind of a confusing term because this thing here, this sentence obviously isn't stating anything. A more appropriate term would be a command or an order, as you'll shortly see why. Either way, the important thing here is that statements rather than expressions are the smallest standalone parts of a valid C program. But what are programs? From what we know from our natural languages, programs would be elaborate plans for carrying out some activities, such as TV programs, theater programs, exercise programs, and stuff like that. Similarly, computer programs are nothing more but elaborate plans for carrying out something that we call a computational process. Surprisingly, these computational processes are things that we do on a daily basis. To convince you that that is the case, I'll give you one example. If I were to multiply 12 by 22, what I would do is carry out a computational process. So let's see if I can do this right. This would be 24, 24, 4, 6, 2. So the result is 264. And what I did can be described as a process, a computational process. And these processes are basically what computer science is all about. And they are the sorts of things that we can use programs to describe. But before we can write programs that would describe processes as complex as these, first we need to, have to make our little baby steps. So let's get back here to this statement and see how we can make a program out of it. The reason why I'm asking this question is because C++ has this annoying trait that standalone statements are not valid programs. The missing part is a piece of magic called the main function. So what I'm going to do now is rewrite this statement and put it in the missing part. 